Well, hello there, chums. It is I, Captain Steven. Today, chums, for you guys in the viewer verse, I have got another lore episode. This one is going to be simplified callbacks lore. Yeah, or callbacks lore simplified, one or the other. But there we go. Let's go and hit on up this plaque. Now, there's 33 snippets to be had from these plaques. So, you're going to need to visit 33 of these plaques to get all of the callbacks lore. So, here we go. Here's one of the snippets just popping up on the screen now. You can see there that they study of the Atlas and of the Sentinels, and they're free to aid the traveler, which is pretty darn freaking cool. And it also mentions here the callbacks and the Gek are now equal in standing. So they very much weren't back in the days of Corvax Prime. <laughs> yeah, which didn't last long because the get completely smashed and obliterated it. But I'll get into that in a moment when I give you my synopsis of these cards that I'm about to put on the screen. So these cards on the screen, feel free to pause and take a look. But this is all the lore from the plaques, all 33 snippets put together in some lovely graphical cards for you guys. So yeah, maybe do some little print screeny things or whatever and then put them over to your PC and print them on a printer or something. Whatever you wish to do to read these and make it easy for you, feel free to go ahead and do so. Excellente! Now, when you actually add a Corvax to your base, your scientist, you do have to do some pretty odd missions for the scientist, which goes about removing the Corvax cube and disconnecting the Corvax from the convergence and then rejoining them back into the convergence. So you'd get to actually play out some of this lore by doing your actual station technician type missions at your base. If you haven't done that, that's a good way to get in touch with the Corvax lore inside of game. And another good way of learning about the Corvax is to go inside of the menu inside of game. And yes, you can hit up how many words are to be learnt of the Corvax. 774 is the current title. We do gain more as patches and updates land in the iteration. So here's a mini synopsis inside of the menu. The Corvax entities are inorganic life forms that inhabit metallic casings passed down from generation to generation they believe through mathematical study they can be raised to the level of the atlas and the the path to this is through the study of sentinels each corvax is pure mind a drop in their great collective convergence the shell they inhabit is of little significance compared to their connection to this group consciousness the corvix were enslaved by the Gek first spawn, and many still view the Gek with deep suspicion. Yeah, I don't blame them, to be honest. If you've seen the Gek law video i done. Here we go, the Explorer's Guild. So I'll let you read this one on the screen. But yes, I always see the Explorer's Guild to be heavily linked towards the actual Corvax, whereas the Mercenaries to the Viking and the Merchants to the Gek. So there we go. There is a little bit to be learnt inside of the menus with inside of iteration. So my synopsis, my sort of take from those cards that I put up earlier, and to simplify the lore of the actual Corvax and to give you a sense of who the Corvax are and what they're all about. The Corvax are very much a scientific race. Uh, yes, they don't really like conflict or confrontation. They would rather be pacifist in nature. The Gek, they took advantage of this sort of nature of the actual Corvax and enslaved the whole freaking race. Yes, and the Corvax were melted down and turned into weaponry for the actual Gek in the enslavement thereon of. And their home world, Corvax Prime, was completely destroyed and obliterated by the Gek. They did have neighbouring planets and systems, but none of them are to aught or to note inside of the lore in their nameage. So we don't even understand how many occupied planets Corvax had have, or whether they even have a home world anymore. The Corvax, though, with their linkage to the Atlas, and the Atlas's word to sacrifice themselves into the birthing pools of Gek, altered the Gek first spawn, and therefore freeing the Corvax from their enslavement thereon of of the Gek first spawn, and actually turned the Gek into quite a docile sort of species that we see now that are more into trade. So thank you very much, Corvaxians, you're freaking awesome. Heck yes you are. 
During the Star Birth mission, and also some of the Weekend mission lore, we have learned that the Korvax were doing experiments into the Void and into an alternate realm that has brought technologies into our verse, including the Animus Beam that's able to suck souls out of creatures to birth the living ship into our verse. So it was also said that the Normandy was also part of this Korvax scientific lore that ruptured realms and brought the Normandy into our verse during Expedition 2. So yes, the Korvax have been up to all sorts of shenanigans, scientific and oddness, which could, I perhaps, lead to something a bit darker and a bit sinister when it comes to Korvax lore. So here we go, here are the actual Korvax, they're freaking awesome. Now if I had to liken them to any other race in sci-fi, it would be to the Kalon with inside of the Orville. Yes, Isaac, freaking awesome character. If you haven't seen the Orville, check it out, you would be glad you did, especially if you're a Trekkie or Star Trek fan, because yeah, it, it's kind of like that with a comedic sort of approach to it but it's freaking awesome it really is so here we go i am now at an archive now you can hit up these archives inside of verse to learn more about the actual histories of the different races this one just so happens to be corvax so i'm picking up a little bit of corvax history and information at this actual historic archive. So there we go, it's not current law. This is always about past law and things that have happened with inside of the verse. And you can learn quite a lot of snippets here. So here we go, you can see here that they were trying to study of the Viking, but they found that the Viking were very resistant to the actual studies that they were trying to do. In fact, they were screaming out, perhaps in pain, which I can't imagine any sort of pain causing a Viking to scream. Even the, one of their leaders tore his own body asunder. Oh yes, they, that he did scream actually. Yeah, thinking about it, he did. <laughs> you would, wouldn't you? Yeah, there we go. Anyhow, so you get an idea that the Korvax are very much a species that are into a studying of other species without really trying to do too much damage. But if they do, it's not damage that they actually understand, I don't believe. I do not feel that the actual Korvax are malevolent in any way, shape or form. However, these experiments that they have been doing in some of the weekend mission law and also into the starbirth law does make me question whether some of the things that they are doing are a little bit dark, a little bit shady and might even be linked in to perhaps Null, the, you know, the guy that's got a light bulb for a head. Yeah, I'm wondering whether he might have something to do with some of that as well. Anyway, there you go. There's all the lore for you guys out there in Viewerverse. Hope you enjoyed that. Goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again. Well, thank you very much for watching. If you like what you see, please hit a like and a subscribe. And I'd like to say a massive great big thank you to all of my backers over on Patreon and over on YouTube membership. Thanking you, backers. And if you want to support this channel, just don't skip the adverts. That throws revenue down my avenue. Or yeah, just stay with Captain Steve a little bit longer and hit something on this screen. There's merch here now too.